Hello, hey everybody, hi. Okay, so my name is Erin Grace. I am the senior technical writer at Epic Global here in Beaverton, and um, my first portfolios sucked. <laughs> my very first portfolio was a one-page Word doc about how to use my help desk's phone system. So basically, it was 2012, where the, recession, the recession had hit my help desk super hard. It went from 25 people down to three. I was one of those three. I was on the chopping block, and I thought, oh my god, I got to get out of here. So I thought, okay, I have a support background. I love to write. Obviously, I should be a technical writer. So I start sending out my resume to uh, internal recs in my organization, and I don't hear anything back, don't hear anything back, don't hear anything back. Finally, someone says, oh, hey, your resume looks really good. Uh, where's your portfolio? And I'm like, Oh, yes, of course, my portfolio. Uh, here, here's this one-page Word doc. And uh, so I didn't get the job. But they, <laughs> I kept sending it out with every resume until finally I did get a job. Awesome. Three-month contract. Cool. I did the work. They loved me. Then I started applying for more internal recs. So I sent out my resume and my one page. And finally, someone reaches out to me. They say, hey, your resume looks good, but do you have anything more recent for your portfolio? And I'm like, oh, uh, yes, of course. And so I spoke to the project manager from my previous job and said, hey, is it cool if I use anything that I wrote in my portfolio? And he said, yeah, of course, just as long as you share it internally, not externally, that's fine. Okay, cool. So I start sending that out too. Finally, I get another job, creme de la creme, four-year contract, client loves us, I'm gonna work with the documentation team, it's gonna be great, and then they fired us after a year, and I am officially out of the company. So I go to my project manager from that, and I say, hey, is it cool if I use something from my, uh, my work in my portfolio? And he says, no. <laughs> Why the heck would you think that? Everything we do is proprietary. You absolutely cannot share that outside the organization. So I worked with him and I negotiated and finally we decided that it would be okay for me to use something as long as I anonymized everything. I couldn't mention our company's name, the client's name, the name of the product, any of the button screens or fields, but as long as I could do that, <laughs> then I could use it in my portfolio. Uh, and after that, I have become a contractor and only recently got a full-time employee gig. Uh, and so over my time as a contractor, I've learned that a lot of the way I worked with portfolios was really not, not the best way. So I'm hoping that I have some, some good information to share with you all here. So why do you need a portfolio at all? Um, simple answer, nothing lasts forever. Obviously, in my career, the nothing lasting forever part kind of came down to bad things. Layoffs, contract ending, getting fired by the client, things like that. Um, but at the same time, those aren't the only reasons why you would potentially want to leave your job. I mean, on top of mergers and buyouts and things like that, there are also good things. You know, maybe what you want to do is get promoted and you need to show your boss, look, I have this list of work that proves I'm good at what I do. Maybe what you need to do is uh, you're looking at getting a position somewhere else where it's even better than your current place and you need to show them that you've got the chops. Maybe you want to be an entrepreneur. You decide you want to work for yourself, but you need to show clients that you can do what you can do. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that for young baby boomers between the ages of 18 and 50, they typically held about 12 jobs. And although obviously not all of us here are young baby boomers, um, at the same time, I think it applies um, broadly across multiple generations, that we're not all going to have one job for the rest of our lives. Things are going to change. We're going to need to be able to show that we can do what we're good at. Unfortunately, when you're creating a portfolio, there's a lot of roadblocks, right? So you are wondering to yourself, okay, well, very well and good that I need a portfolio, but what even is my best work? How do I know? Um, also, what do I do if all of my work is proprietary? A lot of us here are under NDA. How are you supposed to put that kind of work into your portfolio? Or another thing that we run into is that a lot of our work is context sensitive, where it doesn't really make a lot of sense without a huge number of pages to explain the background. 
or it's something so in-depth that someone who's not part of our industry or part of our niche would necessarily understand it. How do you handle situations like that? So let's take these down one by one. First things first, identifying your best work. The first thing you need to think about in any technical writing job is the audience. So in your portfolio, what you're doing is documenting yourself. So think about the audience. The audience for your portfolio is typically going to be a hiring manager or a client. But regardless of which one of those it is, they have the same basic needs out of their documentation. One, they need it to be organized in a clear and logical manner. They need it to be simple. They have something really complex that they need simplified. Otherwise, they wouldn't be hiring a technical writer at all. It needs to be well written. And then something specific for hiring managers and clients is that it needs to be short. They're trying to go through and find the perfect person for the job, and they already have a job that is not looking for the perfect person for the job. They want to be able to see that you can do all of this as quickly as possible, rather than spending hours and hours reading through your portfolio. So the more quickly you can get across that you can do the job, the better off you are. Oh, sorry, let me go back a, a second there. Um, <laughs> so what you want to do is think about, sorry, there we go. Um, so what you want to do is find pieces that meet these needs. Something where you did a particularly good job of organizing the information. Something where you took something that was really complex and made it ridiculously easy to understand. And obviously, we're writers, it should always be written well. Um, so chances are good that you're probably going to need more than one document to meet these standards. But the basic idea that you want to hit here is that good quality is always going to trump, trump good quantity. Um, also, there is a, a school of thought out there saying that in your portfolio you should have a huge amount of variety, you know, manuals and API docs and quick start guides and everything else. But I would argue that good quality even trumps good uh, variety because it's more important to show that you are really good at what you do than to show that you're pretty good at a bunch of different things. Also, when you're looking for your best work, another rubric that I personally use uh, in terms of the simplification is looking at something that took me a really long time to write, but then when it's done, it looks like it didn't take that much time at all. So for example, in my portfolio, I have this piece explaining an extremely complex process, and it took me seriously like 80 hours to write this stupid chapter in my frickin' manual. And now when you read it, it looks like it took me 10 minutes, 20 minutes, because I was able to use like diagrams and flowcharts and really clear writing, tables, etc to take all of that information and put it into something digestible. So being able to show that you can take something really hard and make it really easy is definitely key. Now about proprietary work. Um, one of the keys that I have heard is that you know, there's no getting around proprietary work, so what you should do is try to work on open source. And I don't want to say anything bad about open source. Obviously, if you want to work open source, go for it. That would be a great addition to your portfolio. But that being said, I don't think that unpaid work should be the basis of you being able to get another job. So when it comes to proprietary work, the thing to think about is, um, working with your manager. So my number one suggestion is just ask. Go to your manager and say, hey, is it cool if I use this piece in my portfolio? Although sometimes you'll get a no, more often than not, you'll kind of get an open door. Uh, one of the things I suggest around asking specifically is during the interview, bring it up. Say, hey, by the way, when I am done with the work here, is it okay if I use any of it in my portfolio? Chances are really good that in the interview, the answer is going to be no, of course not, because they're not really incentivized to say yes. But once you've gotten the job, you've kicked a ton of butt, you've 
shown them that you're a good person who's not out to get them, if you reintroduce the topic afterwards, they are a little more likely to be softened up because they understand that the way you got into this job was with a portfolio, the way you're gonna get your next job is with a portfolio. So it makes sense for them to see your side of the picture. Also, if it turns out that you're an employee and what you were applying for was not a contract job, like a lot of what I've done, but instead an employed job, and they ask, oh, but does that mean you're leaving? An easy way to frame it is to just say, I'm just keeping my portfolio updated the same way that I keep my resume updated. I wanna make sure that I don't lose track of my accomplishments. That way someday, when I'm promoted, I can show you that I'm worth it. There is no need to be nervous or, or worried about how you're presenting yourself when you're asking. Um, that being said, let's say you get the no. Okay, no, the work is too proprietary, you absolutely can't have it. Okay, so then now it's time to get a little creative. Is there something you can use instead of the, the thing that you really wanted to use? Things that are a little bit less proprietary are things like flowcharts spreadsheets, sometimes a really great slide deck can show off your ability to organize and simplify while also typically being a lot less proprietary. Another thing to think about is negotiating with your manager. Okay, you can't use the piece whole cloth. You can't use any piece whole cloth. All right, so would it be possible to anonymize the content? Much like one of my portfolio pieces where I had to change everything it is sometimes possible to be able to at least show the organization, the simplification, and the quality writing, even with a piece that's been anonymized to heck and back. Uh, alternatively, if they don't like the anonymization route, you could go for redaction. It's a little less ideal, but at the same time, you'll still get, um, you'll be able to get around more of the legal hurdles. Also, I would honestly suggest that if you have the ability, when it comes to proprietary things like this, maybe reach out to the legal team yourself and say, hey, I need something for my portfolio. Is it cool if I add this? You can be certain that whatever answers they give you are going to be 100%. Um, and finally, with a lot of proprietary work, you know, nothing is proprietary forever. A lot of things will eventually, you know, patents run out, copyrights end. So when does the work you've done stop being proprietary? Maybe it's in 20 years. Maybe it's next year. Maybe it's next month. Find out when you can start using the piece, and if it makes sense, ask your manager whether or not you can release it then. Now in terms of the context-sensitive work, um, this is something where, again, you need to think about a lot of, about getting a little bit creative. So if the work you do, the main written work you do, is very, um, very dependent on context. Think about things that are naturally not dependent on context. Flowcharts, diagrams, slide decks, etc. All of those things are meant literally to stand on their own. And although they might not necessarily show particularly good writing, again, two of the big things that hiring managers and clients are looking for is your ability to organize the information in a really clear way and the ability to take something that's really, really hard and make it simple enough to digest. So if you're staying focused on what your audience needs, then it should be a little bit easier to go and look, see if you can find something that's a little bit co less context dependent. Um, also, if it turns out that you can't really find anything that's context independent, it might make sense to actually create something that is specifically designed to go into your portfolio in order to help, um, in order to help the overall product that you're producing as it is. If you are creating something that needs 20 pages worth of explanation in order to make sense, then it would also make sense to provide a quicker way to digest that information. So to the extent that it's possible, it's probably good for you and it's probably good for your product for you to be able to produce something that's a little bit less uh, context dependent. And now if everything else fails, 
let's say there's absolutely no way to release the proprietary information, you absolutely cannot find some way to drill down the context so that it's a little more readable, um, now you can get a little bit more creative. So a couple of options are to look at other ways that you can show off your ability to write and organize. So just because you're a technical writer and just because what you're looking for is uh, technical work, it doesn't mean that you can't necessarily use something that isn't technical in and of itself. So for example, if you have any copywriting experience, again, a copywriter's job is pretty different from a technical writer's job, but in the same way, you can still show the organization, the simplification, and the quality writing skills. Um, also, if you do anything in terms of scripts, for example, maybe if you have a YouTube channel, it could be very helpful to include videos or scripts to show, again, that you know how to organize the content, you know how to make it very simple. Um, and especially if you have something like script writing experience, that can go to show that you have a broader range of experience than just sitting at a computer writing. If you have any kind of editing skills, that would be great to show off too. Um, and also, well, <laughs> this is kind of a weird one, but I think there, it's almost legendary at this point, the, the write me a document about how to write a sandwich piece. <laughs> um, that's actually how I got my most recent job. The, the hiring manager had reached out and um, she said that everyone who was submitting was required to show their resume, their portfolio, and then also write her a document about how to make a sandwich. And my first thought after being like, this is real, um, <laughs> was uh, that if I was going to get the job, what I really needed to do was knock it out of the park. So the first thing you think is, oh, peanut butter sandwich, it's really easy. But again, as a technical writer, the thing that you want to be able to show is that you can do something that is, take something that's really hard and make it simple. So rather than showing off your skill with something that's already simple, show off your skill with something that's really hard. The hardest sandwich I could think of to make was a club sandwich. I mean, you've got to toast the bread. The thing is like a double decker. There's three pieces of bread. There's a bunch of like wet ingredients that'll make the bread soggy. It's, it's a minefield of a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, okay, if I can take this minefield of a sandwich and make it really easy and really simple, that'll be the piece that lets me shine and show what I can do. So I took it, I wrote it, I sent it to her, and after I was hired, she, she talked to me about it later and she told me that that piece specifically was what had helped me rise above the crop. I wasn't the most experienced, I wasn't the one who necessarily had the coolest or best portfolio, but that one sandwich piece where I showed that I know how to do the job, that was the thing that really sold her and so I was able to get the job on it. Now last but not least, now that you have your portfolio pieces, we actually have to display them somehow. So uh, when it comes to displaying your work, there's a lot of different options. Um, for the first part of my career, a lot of what I did was email attachments. Email attachments are fine, but they're not particularly flexible. So I prefer to stay away from email attachments when I'm doing my portfolio presentation. Um, what I would suggest instead is a personal website. I have my portfolio on Squarespace. It's very easy to set up. It's very cheap to maintain. You can easily uh, upload documents for users to download later. Super easy to use and it's really beautiful. Um, for a slightly cheaper slash actually free option, GitHub is another good place where you can go in and upload your documents so that other people can download them later without you having to physically deliver it every single time someone wants to see it. Um, the other advantage to keeping your portfolio on the internet, of course, is that it has, there's a URL that links directly to your portfolio. So you can put it on business cards, you can put it at the top of your resume, you can put it, if you have a different website, you can put it on the other website, you can put it on your Twitter. I mean, literally, the places where you can put this URL is endless, and then it helps people find your information rather than you having to specifically give it to them. 
Um, another thing that I do, which is a little bit of a quirky thing, but um, I have found that it really helps, is when I go to an interview, I actually bring pieces of my portfolio with me in what you could call a brag book. Um, basically, I print out the best pieces to fit the job I'm applying for, and I just put them in a cheap little plastic cover from Office Depot, uh, and I present it to uh, the hiring manager when I'm there in the interview. Um, the advantage there is that they don't have to do any additional work to go back and look at my work again. They don't have to like find my resume and find the URL. It's right there in front of them, and it really leaves a big impression. Um, if you do this, one big suggestion I have is that you, that you create an explanation of what makes your work impressive. And this applies for the website as well, but I think you have a little more flexibility in some ways when it comes to the printed material to show this is why it was really impressive. I was able to take a 500-page document and distill it into this 20-page quick guide or I was able to take this insanely complicated process that nobody at the company understood, and I put it into this really great flowchart. If you can explain to them why the work you're doing is impressive, it'll help them understand a little bit better that what you've done is worth hiring you for. So that's my talk. Uh, which is uh, Tututni for thank you very much. And I hope that you all have a good luck with your portfolios. Please feel free to come talk to me about them.